Today our topic is the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse. So our learning target is how can I use the Pythagorean Theorem and its converse to solve problems. Pythagorean Theorem, this is just a review. We've already talked about this, but in a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. So remember, we call the short side legs, so A and B are legs, and the longest side, the side across from the right angle, is called our hypotenuse. So in example one, we want to find the area of the isosceles triangle with the side lengths 10 meters, 13 meters, and 13 meters. So isosceles triangle means two sides are the same length, which we know are these 13 meter sides. So if we just make a rough sketch here, that would be our isosceles triangle. Now we want the area. So area of a triangle is one half base times height. So we need to determine what the height of this triangle is. So that would be the altitude. So from this point down to the base. And that's going to split our base in half. It's one of the neat features about isosceles triangles. The altitude splits your base in half. So now we've made a nice right triangle. Actually two right triangles, but we only need one of them. We have 13 on the side, 5 on the bottom, and then our height x. We don't know what that is, but we want to solve for it. So we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Either 5 or x can be a. I'm going to say 5 is a squared, and then plus x squared equals our hypotenuse c, 13 squared. 5 squared is 25, plus x squared equals 169. Get x squared by itself, minus 25 on both sides. x squared equals 144 x squared, we want just x, so we have to take the square root of both sides, so we get x equals 12. But that's not it. We wanted the area, so now we know what our height is. Our base is 10, so we know our base is 10. Our height is 12, so now we can solve for the area. 1 half times base of 10 times height of 12 equals 1 half times 10 is 5 times 12 is 60 meters squared. And triple is a set of three positive integers a, b, and c that satisfy the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So they're just numbers that satisfy our Pythagorean theorem. So the common ones are 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, those who you'll see really often, 8, 15, 17, and 7, 24, 25. And then in the list below them, those are their multiples. So they're just multiplying each number of the triple. So to get 6, 8, and 10, we multiplied by 2, 9, 12, 15, we multiplied by 3, 30, 40, 50, multiplying by 10. So their multiples that are also Pythagorean triples. So this list is really helpful. Just to know some different Pythagorean triples right off the top of your head can be helpful, so that way you don't always have to use the Pythagorean theorem and figure out all of the math. One of those examples would be example two, find the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Well, that means x is going to be c, our biggest side. We have 10 and 24. So if we look up at our Pythagorean triple chart, I'm looking right here and I see 10, 24, 26. So that tells me right now that my hypotenuse x is going to be 26. Didn't even have to use the Pythagorean theorem.
It's just one of those common triples. Using the Pythagorean theorem to classify triangles. So this is where the converse comes into play. So we can classify triangles in three ways. We can classify it to be a right triangle, an acute triangle, or an obtuse triangle. And the way to do this is by using the Pythagorean theorem. So if c squared equals a squared plus b squared, then we can say that it is a right triangle. So in this example, we're not given the right triangle marking, but if we could say that the sum of the squares of our legs equals the square of our hypotenuse, then it would be a right triangle. So this is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. It's truly the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem in reverse. The next two are just a little bit different. So if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then it is an acute triangle. And then if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then it is an obtuse triangle. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that c will always be the biggest side of your triangle. The longest, the biggest side will always be C. Some examples for this. Tell whether the given triangle is a right triangle. So if I'm looking here, this is going to be what I put in for C, A, and B. So we want to know is A squared plus B squared equal to C squared? This is where a calculator is going to be very helpful. So we can plug all these operations into our calculator. 9 squared is 81. Fifteen squared is two twenty-five. And three square root thirty-four squared is three oh six. So we just need to add eighty-one and two twenty-five, which is three oh six. So three oh six equals three oh six. So we can say that yes, this is a right triangle. Second example. We look for our longest side, 26, that's going to be C, and then we'll make 14A and 22B. So we want to know, is 14 squared plus 22 squared equal to 26 squared? Again, calculator use is welcomed and encouraged. 14 squared is 196. Plus 22 squared is 484 equals 26 squared, which is 676. 196 plus 484 is 680. So since 680 does not equal 676, we would say, no, this is not a right triangle. Last example, tell whether the segments can form a triangle. If so, classify the triangle as acute, right, or obtuse. So in order to tell if it can form a triangle, we have to go back to our triangle inequality theorem. So remember, that means that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of the triangle must be greater than the length of the third side. So I had this nice drawing or image here. So if I have 7.2 plus 7.2, that is 14.4. So as long as my third side stays below 14.4, it makes a triangle. However, if that third side goes above 14.4, it makes that nice straight line, and then it no longer forms a triangle. All right, so then using that theorem, remember we want to take the two smallest sides, add them together, 
make sure it's larger than the biggest side. 10 plus 11 is 21, which is greater than 14. So yes, this can form a triangle. Now we want to know, is the triangle acute, right, or obtuse? So that's going back to using that Pythagorean theorem. So if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then it's going to be an acute triangle. If c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then it's going to be obtuse. And again, if it's equal to, then it's going to be a right triangle. So we can put c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Our c is 14 equals 10 squared plus 11 squared. 14 squared is 196. 100 squared is, I'm sorry, 10 squared is 100 plus 11 squared is 121. 196 and 100 plus 121 is 221. So we would put less than in the middle. 196 is less than 221. So when it's less than, this is going to be an acute triangle. Example B. First off, we need to know, can this form a triangle? So we take the two smallest sides, make sure it's bigger than the third. 8.2 plus 4.1, we want that to be bigger than 12.2. 8.2 plus 4.1 is 12.3, which is just a little bit bigger than 12.2. So yes, these can form a triangle. So now we need to know, is it an acute triangle, right triangle, or obtuse triangle? So again, we want c squared equals a squared plus b squared. c is 12.2, so 12.2 squared equals 4.1 squared plus 8.2 squared. 12.2 squared is 148.84. 4.1 squared is 16.81. And 8.2 squared is 67.24. Sixteen point eight one plus sixty seven point two four is eighty four oh five, which means our C squared is bigger than our A squared plus B squared. Since it is bigger, this makes our triangle an obtuse triangle. That's all the notes that I have for you today. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.